What's going on, fishers? Welcome back to Fishers Game Day. My name is Seth Gaston. I'm joined alongside my co-hosts. Aiden Foley. Joe Bellotto. Raymond Green. And Alex Young. Boy. All right, so we got a lot to talk about today, guys. It is arguably the biggest matchup of the year. We got our first, our very first sectionals game versus Noblesville on November 1st on Friday at 7 p.m. And it is at Noblesville. So this is an away game for our first sectionals game. Um, one thing to note about Noblesville is that they're 0-7 in the Hoosiers Crossroad Conference, and they're 2-7 overall. Um, of course, that doesn't mean we got to count them out. Of course, you can't doubt them. Um, but I think we kind of going to start off today's episode, hand it over to Joe and talk about last week's game versus Zionsville. All right, so last week's game against Zionsville resulted in us with a win. We won 30-6, which is kind of a blowout. Um, <clears throat> so obviously... Our, our offense was very good and our defense held the Zionsville Eagles to only six points with an, uh, a, missed field, a missed extra point. Uh, we had three touchdowns overall. Ryan Thembalembu had one rushing touchdown. He, he, he had 20 carries for 91 yards. Uh, 10 yards was his longest carry. But on the other hand, Brady Griffith, who you know obviously was a big, a big factor in that game, he had 43 yards and 10 carries, but he had two touchdowns. Yeah, he's a dog. So, yeah, when it comes to the red zone and having oh. to put, you know, get into the zone that's what he does um uh on to our quarterback mr caden hill he threw for let's see here 284 total yards which is a big game from him good golly um, Molly. and then on defense owen fulta had six tackles uh as well as graham imes and nathan ashley both had five so big game on defense uh held the zionsville eagles to only six points and if we could do that in the upcoming game against noblesville i think we'd have a great shot to just put them out early yes sir yeah, so I'm going to go back and uh, recap the Noblesville game earlier in the season. Um, obviously, it was fairly low scoring. Uh, it was We ended up winning 17-14 to 14 in overtime. Uh, Tigers were held scoreless through three quarters. Uh, ended up scoring 14 in the fourth quarter. Uh, first, uh, we have John Anthony. Um, obviously, Stanford commit. He had... He had um, 97, 97 receiving yards on 11 receptions, so he was a big factor in the win for the Tigers. Um, also, Carson, Carson Ellums had one reception of 48 yards and a touchdown. That was a touchdown to get us on the board first. That was huge uh, to get our momentum rolling. Uh, Gage Sturgill, unfortunately, he's been out for the season, uh, injured in the Brownsburg game, but he... Uh, he had uh, 193 yards on uh, 30 attempts, 17 completions, so he had a big game. And obviously, Noblesville isn't known for passing the ball. They had one attempt and zero completions, which is kind of insane to think about. Out of this uh, world. <laughs> it's like 1930s over here. What? Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, our defense played a big role in that game, holding them to 14 points after they uh, took an early lead. And uh, hopefully we can do that again. And obviously, Caden Hill has been playing playing well. So mm -hmm. playing very well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the upcoming game for Noblesville, um, we're looking at we're looking at a good one. Uh, this year, John Anthony is averaging about 110 yards a game. Oh man, mm -hmm. that's just just crazy. That's numbers right there, ain't it? Just crazy. Just crazy. Our leading rusher right right now and currently throughout the entire season has been uh, Ryan Tembelembu. Uh 70 yards a game is exceptional oh. but he's he, i feel like we most uh mostly use him through the air uh pike I agree yeah had three he's good he's good on both the passing and rushing side had he's three good, receiving touchdowns good you know? overall yeah. player yeah so i think we're looking at a lot um our star linebacker emmanuel is coming back this week it's going to be um lo lovely to see him back he's the league or is the he's a team leader in tackles with uh averaging about 10 tackles a game so we're looking at a very good uh defensive game this week what do you what do you think alex well you say there's 107 uh passing yards per game for j uh, j but then there's 108 rushing yards for brody uh gump uh for noblesville so obviously very uh, okay, very, very 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 heavy run game and only their their highest for passing is 27 yards per game it's their tight end yeah obviously if we have a strong um you know close-up defense and a good blitz i think we could stop their rush game mm -hmm. really and if we stop that rush game we'll force them to pass and obviously we know what to do when it comes to passing uh, i think we'll create turnovers and that'll turn into scoring opportunities yeah. and kind of speaking of passing I, I got a question for you guys i don't i don't know about you but I, do their wide receivers exist that's that's my question only because because you know they're they're there and they're there, ready, ready to catch the ball. But Noblesville seems to 
stick with this running game, although they're two and seven, which I don't quite understand. Not really understanding the game plan there, but I just kind of want to get you guys' thoughts on on why why they haven't really changed that up. You know, considering their record and, and their play. Um, and what do you like? I, I know I know we're on the Fisher side over here, but what do you think Noblesville could do to make this a better matchup than what we think it's going to be? I think obviously we know they have a strong running game and that's why they use it so much. But when it comes down to it and when you want a better record, you have to throw the ball. That's just the bit. That's the basic. It's football. You have to throw the ball to score touchdowns. You can't just run. And if your opponents know you're going to run the play majority of the time, like almost throughout the entire game, you throw one pass like they did last time, you're not going to win the game. That's just the bare minimum of it. Yeah, it really comes down to the fundamentals. Like, um, I don't I don't know if those receivers like even, even try, like when it comes to, like, I, I think they get like really giddy whenever they start running routes i mean it's the run blocking most of the time so it really comes down to like will the receivers get involved or are they just gonna basically be extra tight ends on the field this week again yeah well i think it starts with the quarterback i mean i think it shows that they have a lack of trust in him um i mean one pass attempt against us that's unheard of i feel like and i think the record goes to show for it they're they haven't won a game in conference mm -hmm. like so, uh, seven, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Seven. So, oh, you know, you can, you know, defenses know what they're going to do. So it's a lot easier to game plan for them. And, uh, if they, if they do that again, I like the Tigers in this one. Yeah. Just looking like mannequins out there. Not really doing much. Just kind of, just kind of standing there blocking. That's all they're doing. So not really, not really looking to not much from the pass. A lot from the, a lot from the run though. All right, yeah, well, the kind of shifting gears of that, we've talked about what we think Noblesville has kind of lacked, but at the same time, you always have to go into a game knowing that anything could happen and you can never let your guard down. So, you know, I, I think another question that is, is being posed right now is, is what will Fishers come out and do? What, what are they, what are they going to come out with? What are they going to come out and do in the sectionals that we may have not seen in the regular season or something that we think is going to going to win the game for them over, over Noblesville? You know what? I think Caden Hill is going to come out slinging the rock. Shout out Seahill. Absolutely slinging that thing. I mean, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, I'm calling at least 250 yards at minimum. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, uh, How many he, he's, he's going to go, I think he's, I think he's going to be like an absolutely incredible quarterback. He's going to show a lot. Um, we have had like ups and downs with the quarterbacks this year mm -hmm. with uh, Gage going out. It was very, it was very brutal early on in the season, but I, I truly do believe that Caden can, Caden can go out there and uh, sling it a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, Obviously, opposite of Noblesville, we, if we get our throwing game down early, especially in the first and second quarter, and we take that early lead, maybe get up to 14, 21 points, I think it'll be very easy for us to maintain that throughout the last half of the game. Uh, and then we get our running game going with Ryan and Brady. I feel like, you know, if we can really get on the board early and maintain that lead throughout the rest of the game, I don't think we'll be able to, I think our defense will be able to stop the Noblesville Millers from scoring, you know, more than we do in the first half if we can pull out early. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I think the our defense needs to be prepared though for anything. Um, you know, obviously the record record isn't showing much, so they're gonna think that, uh, that people are just gonna think they're gonna run. We need to be prepared for mm -hmm. for a passing attack. You never know. We don't want to be caught off guard with that. So I think as long as we're prepared for everything, I like our chances. And uh, yeah, I think Caden Hill's got got some confidence and. I think, like, like Ray said, he'll be slinging the rock. 100%. Just like Mr. Schott said, 100%. Uh, we gotta. I, I like us on the uh, on the ground. 100%. Caden Hills. I think he's gonna sling it. Two passing touchdowns. Okay. That's what I'm gonna say. And yeah, definitely gonna use Ryan. 100%. Yeah, I do want to say. Um, their two wins came against Homestead and Mount Vernon, so it's not anything you know special. They did beat uh, Homestead 49 to six, which is you know kind of a massive blowout. But, but who is it? Is Homestead. Actually, Homestead is up north, Fort Wayne. Right, somewhere near home. Exactly. Um, so they lost to Franklin Central, Brownsburg, Avon, all the teams that are supposed to be, you know, especially those are the most important games, those conference games. Somebody's cutting up. And when you don't win a single one, it really it really shows on your overall record. It shows the kind of team you are. So I think going into this one, I feel confident. Personally, I feel confident that the Fishers Tigers will be able to get it done. Yeah, um, no, for sure. Um, but I also I also think that kind of kind of shifting gears. I think we've talked a lot about the offensive game on both sides. Um, shout out offensive coordinator Mr. Triplett. Um, but I think we also kind of need to shift gears into the defense because, uh, I, in my opinion, I feel like from watching some of the games, I feel like our defense has struggled a little bit. I guess I feel like sometimes we let 
something, let, let some things go that definitely should have been stopped. Yeah. So as for the defensive side of things, what are yeah. some things that we think need to change I or do, need to happen in this I game? I want to say, obviously maybe our defense picked up a little bit because we only held the Zionsville team to six points. Um, and shout out to Graham Arms who had an interception in that game. It's a great interception. And not only is he does he play defense, he is our punter as well. So, you know, he's, he's juggling two sides of the ball, which is very hard to do. Um, and I think, I think you know, going into this game, we'll take away what we did on defense against Zionsville. Hopefully, take that into this game and use it against Noblesville. For sure. Um, you know, on the defense side of the ball, with Emmanuel coming back, it's going to be a lot of ankle bites. Uh, he he loves to just take out the ankles. Not for sure. Yeah, so, for sure. so I think it's. <laughs> I think it's really going to be a defensive game. Uh, I don't think we're going to let up many rushing yards. They're going to have to. They're going to have to start passing the ball a little bit on us. But um, I do believe that we're going to have a really good defensive game. Yeah. Speaking of the defense, I think our D line is going to be crucial. Obviously, they have a really good O line, which is why they run a lot. Um, so they definitely rely on that. I think. I think our, our D line will play a big part, and also the linebackers. Um, I think that's our strength of our defense. Obviously, our secondary has been known to struggle a little bit, but I think, mm -hmm. you know, since the Millers don't have a great passing game, that plays in our favor. Yeah, assuming they go into this game, uh, a le uh, more passing than they are going to run the ball. Um, probably have to lean back on our secondary, most likely, and um, hope that Jev and all the other ones step up. All the other ones. All the other <laughs> Emmanuel, maybe. Can you name one? Name, name Emmanuel. Name one more. Nathan Ash. Nathan Ash. <laughs> Owen Fulta. Okay, he didn't have to help. Charlie Harmon. Tristan Johnson. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, I think I think to wrap things up, I think overall, I think we know what we're kind of expecting from this game. I think what we what Fisher should expect, what we should expect to see is Noblesville coming out hot, Noblesville coming out strong because you know they have a lot to prove, and I think they want to show that. Um, and I think that's going to be a really important part and key factor of their game. And I think Fisher's, um, I think they face some adversity throughout the season, and I think they're going to you know want to get past this first round of the sectionals and prove that they're more than just the team that we saw in the regular season. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Caden Hill is also going to want to really prove himself in this game. So I think we're going to see a big game all around for both teams. I think. Um, yeah, score predictions. I think. I think score predictions. Okay. Yeah. I mean. I mean, for me. Uh, you know, I remember la the last Noblesville game was it was 17 to 14 us. You know, with that with that winning uh, field goal. Um, actually, right over there, by the way. But uh, I think for this game, I'm going to go hey, with. Really? A, I think I'm going <laughs> to. Yep, I think I'm gonna go with a score prediction of 21 to 14 Fishers. Okay, it's a little low scoring. Aiden, you wanna go? Yeah, you know, obviously the first first matchup was here at Reynolds Tiger Stadium. Uh, we had the home field advantage. I think, um, you know, as long as our fans pack the stands, um, it almost feel like a home game for us. You know, I think our team will be will be confident. So I'll have to go. I'll go 24 14 Tigers. Um, I think okay. I think offense will step it up and. Defense will hold them to, to 14 again. Yeah, no, I really hate that score. Um, it's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I think, as I said earlier, I think this score, I think this game is going to be really high scoring for us. Not for uh, sure. coming, out of, coming out of the Zionsville game, that was 30-6. to six. I really do think maybe the Tigers will have a similar score to that. On the winning side, of course. Um, so my score prediction is going to be 42. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, 42. Oh. And here, here. We're gonna go 42 14. All right, 42 14. Woo! Tigers win. Moving Woo! on. They crushed the Millers. All right, right? Let's not, I mean, I Lordy. Them, but not that much faith. I'm sorry. <laughs> what anyways, the stigma? Anyways, down, down here, what are we thinking? Score predictions. You know, for me, uh, I'm gonna make it quick and simple. Uh, I'm calling 28 14. Okay. S simple That's as valid. that. That's valid. Ew. Oh, no explanation. No explanation. Uh, I'm gonna go a little deja vu. I feel like it's gonna be pretty, pretty close, pretty even match on defense. A little bit of the same on offense. No, and I'm gonna go 17 14. Okay. 17, 14. I would just like, just like to say we've all said that the Millers are gonna score 14. So if they don't score 14, then something is seriously wrong. Well, they did last time, Seth. Yeah, but we're talking about this time, Joe. Yes, yeah, Seth. Man. I can't do it with you. Close it out. What is your score all right, prediction, well, well, guys, I think that's all we have for today. Um, it's going to be a great game. Very windy. It's going to be a great game versus Noblesville, this first first round of the sectionals matchup. The Tigers are expected to come out on top, and I believe they will come out on top. Once again, I'm Seth Gaston, joined alongside all my co-hosts. Thanks for watching Fisher's Game Day. We'll see you next time.